Hello, everyone. So, I didn't announce this uh, live stream a long time before I started because I'm going to experiment. So, for everyone who's here, I oh, it's, it's 19 people. <laughs> I was hoping there will be only five because this can fail horribly. So, let me know if the sound is, uh, if you can't hear me or if the sound is too low. Because I've been experimenting for two days with a new setup. So that means I have a microphone for my voice, I have a microphone for the guitar, both dynamic microphones, so I, I will have no issues with the face. And I have a two camera setup, so I can now, let me see, I can now switch to a close up of my guitar, right? And then I can switch to some tap. So I can switch, I can make all these changes, but I mean, I haven't, this is the first time I'm doing it uh, streaming, so it might go horribly wrong. Just a warning. If it goes wrong, I'll still make this video, but I'll just do it as a regular video. So what I did is, uh, this was actually an idea of somebody who's in the chat, I see. It's Hans-Peter Lillesseu. I, th I think it was you, right, Hans? I'm not sure, but uh, I think it was you who wrote me a message or you commented that I should remake my oldest video that I made, Q&A with Christian, about right-hand technique. Maybe it's the second video. I have four videos, Q&A with Christian, and I think the second one is about right-hand picking technique. And in that video, I discuss five picking exercises, exercises that I did myself for many years to develop my picking technique. And I'm, I'm talking about gypsy jazz picking here, so I'm not talking about alternate picking, because I see Miko Hilden is here, who is, of course, a fantastic alternate picker. I'm a very bad alternate picker. Alternate. I'm a gypsy jazz picker, and I'm going to show you how to develop that technique. Ah, yes, it was Hans-Peter Lillesseu. So, if this goes horribly wrong, it's his fault. <laughs> if this goes well, it's, it's, his, it's his idea. So, what I did is, I was looking at those exercises, and I revised them because when I was revisiting them, uh, to be honest, I haven't done those exercises myself in, I think, two years uh, because I, I switched to other stuff. I thought, you know what, I can improve them and I can also improve the way you interact with them. So I'm going to show you those exercises. I think it's now seven exercises. And then, of course, those that tab will be available for my patrons and maybe I will re-edit this video, depending on how much rambling there is, like this, and re-cut it, especially for my patrons. So, so just so you know. But you can follow along on the screen. The tab will be on the screen. Now, I'm going to go through all the exercises one after another, demonstrate, uh, tell you why you should do them, what you should pay attention to. Uh, oh, I see here somebody vocal up. Okay, I can, I can use uh, my vocal. Like this, is this better? This is too loud. Like this, yeah, it's a dynamic It's a dynamic mic, so I have to really talk into it. Um, I'm going to go through all the exercises one after another without stopping because I want people that watch this video in the future to uh, be able to see the exercises without too much interruptions. But then, and that would be the bonus for people that are watching it, after that, please ask me questions about technique. So there is also a Q&A about technique, technique, maybe you have issues, maybe you have questions about the exercises or just general picking questions. Um, I'd be happy to answer them and that would be nice for people to see in the future. So let's just get started. If there are no technical issues, if you can hear the guitar clearly. If you can hear the guitar clearly. Then I think we can start. So let's switch to the close-up. So exercise one, and I gave them all funny names, so that when you uh, do the exercises, you can have you can have a funny thought in your mind because it can get pretty boring. So this first exercise is called "Please stop it," because that's probably the reaction that uh, your better half may have when you do this for a long time. So this first exercise is the same as the exercise was in the old video Q&A with Christian number two. Don't watch that video, it's very slow. It was one of the first videos I made. 
So this video is purely to start training, uh, syncing your hands with a simple alternate picking pattern. So we're not gonna do anything difficult. There's no double downstroke. There's no half rest stroke. I'm gonna talk about all these things. We're gonna just sync our hands and the, the point of the exercise is to do it faster and faster. So let me first play for you very slowly what it sounds like. And I'm gonna try, I wanted to try to do everything with a metronome, but it might be hard because I need my phone for other stuff, but I'll try it anyway. So I'm gonna go to a metronome. And I'm gonna demonstrate now at 120, but please start slower. And the end goal would be, for every exercise, the end goal would be around 170 uh, for proper technique, 180, and you can say you have good technique, and 190, and you you can say you have excellent technique, because it's, it's gonna get harder and harder. So I'm gonna start at 120, I'm gonna put the click on two and four, but if you start at home, start with a click on all four beats, then switch to one and three, then switch to two and four, then switch to only beat two and only beat four, and don't do everything on one day, Just when you feel you need to change, change it up. Because it, the point of this exercise is that you change the retronome so that you're not gonna get used to which notes fall on certain clicks. You wanna change it up. But I'm gonna do everything with retronome on two and four. So, uh, what it says here, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. That's what it says, right? But that's just the basis, because you have to work with this. First thing to notice is that I'm playing everything in swing, and this is something that has changed. We're not gonna do the exercises straight anymore, because the end goal is actually that you train your picking hand to always have a consistent swing rhythm, even when you do double downstrokes, even when you uh, have to skip strings, doesn't matter, you always need that swing, a T, D, 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 D. So we're gonna do all the exercises in swing, except for when it's uh, 16 notes or triplets. So this is an eighth note exercise. Everything is gonna be in swing. And um, the point is to only rotate your forearm because that's the motion we make when we do gypsy just picking. We want to rotate for downstroke, we want to rotate this way. For an upstroke, we want to rotate this way. So it's not with the wrist, it's not with the thumb. These are all possibilities, but I'm just gonna show you the technique that is being used. Let's say here in the Netherlands, let's say it's the Dutch school of gypsy jazz. It's with a rotation with the forearm. Now you cannot see my forearm really clearly. Maybe I can, this is better. So this is the motion. Now, depending on how arched your wrist is, it might look like you're doing it with the wrist, right? Because the wrist, the, the more the wrist is out, the more it looks like your wrist is moving. The rule for that is you just put your biceps on top of the guitar and you drop your hand, you drop your hand. And then this is the room that is between your wrist and your Guitar will be different for everyone. For me, it's not that much. It's, I'm not playing like this. So we rotate the forearm. We kind of synchronize every uh, third and seventh note with a click, of course. And we're going to try to get a consistent swing rhythm. That is very important. Might even be the most important thing to have a consistent swing rhythm. And then we're going to play this exercise. And then we're going to move our fret up. And we do the same thing. I didn't write that down. And we move fret up until five frets and we go down. So let me play it on a faster tempo because otherwise it's gonna take forever. I'm gonna go to 150 and I'm gonna show you the whole exercise one time. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now we go back, right? I'm not gonna do that. So you go back to the fourth fret, back to three, back to two, back to one. Of course you can go up much further, but usually five is enough. Some other points to pay attention to. 
you want um, you want to exaggerate the swing a little bit, and the faster the tempo goes, the, the difficult, the more difficult it gets. But we really want to. Maybe your style is more straight, but still, it is important to imprint this swing rhythm in your picking hand because it's easier to do swing rhythms with alternate picking like this exercise is alternate but the moment we get to double downstrokes we'll get later it gets more and more difficult so it's important to play all exercises with the same feel because this exercise is easier to play in swing than the third exercise which will be harder that feel will still will be will still be in your ears right okay this exercise you can speed it up, uh, maybe go five beats up. This was 150, maybe do 155. The end goal would be one, let's say 180. So I'm going to play it one time at 180. Let's do 190 so you can hear what it sounds like. It helps to sing before so to get the rhythm. One, two, three, four. Go do, 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 go do. One, two, three, four. And so on. Now this exercise, because it's pretty easy, you can go higher than 190. Maybe you could try this exercise at your top speed, 220, 250. Only for this exercise though, because it gets more difficult uh, once we progress. Okay, first exercise, easy exercise. Uh, get your fingers, get your hands synchronized. Another point, important point is don't do stuff like this. Don't put two fingers down when you only have to put one finger down. I know that is a kind of school, but in for guitar and especially the gypsy guitar where we put where we play a lot of horizontal stuff in practice you can only put one finger down mostly so like this don't do although that might look more efficient put all fingers down and then only release this one don't do that really lift all fingers and put them down of course don't do this you want to keep the motion small but you want to lift the fingers every uh, beat Okay, let's go to exercise two. Let me check in the chat if there are any technical issues. Um, yeah, oh yeah, I see that. If you want to ask me a question, tag, my, tag me, because I, otherwise I won't find the questions back like what Pablo Cardona did now. So you write at and then you write my name. You have to spell it exactly like my channel name, even with the uh, capital letters, because if you do it wrong, it won't show up red. So it's at Christian space fun fun is with the small small letters space hamert with a capital and christian is with two a's okay let's go to exercise number two exercise two is a famous lick for e7 and it's in 16 notes it's pretty easy to do it sounds very uh, impressive but it's not much more difficult than the previous exercise except that it's faster so i'm gonna go back to tempo 150 the exercise sounds like this. I will do it without a metronome uh, very slowly. So it's three, two, one, zero on every string, except for the low E string. Then we we move one fret up and we play three, two, one, slide one, open, right? And also this exercise is again to synchronize your hands. Now, when you move up frets, you have to start using all four fingers. So we get jump fret up, right like that. And then we continue, we go to the third possibility, fourth. If you ever lose your place on guitar, just think about your first finger, which fret. So you can uh, think to yourself, open, first fret. Two, right? Okay, let me play with the metronome. Two, three, four. Digga, 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 digga. One, two, three, four. <laughs> 
and then you go back. Some important things to pay attention to. With this exercise, it's important to give an accent on every uh, first note of a beat, right? So, diggy 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 di. You can you can um, exaggerate it if you want, or not if you want. You should exaggerate it, especially in the beginning. And then after a while, if you've you've locked in with the metronome, you can make it somewhat less. But it's still important to keep it there because that's the way you're gonna eventually practice very fast phrases, very fast sixteenth phrases, to keep you anchored to the beat. It's important to accentuate certain notes that are on the beat. For this exercise, we accentuate every note on the beat. Which is very easy because it's an, it's a uh, downstroke. And also, of course, trains using f all four fingers. And again, don't put all fingers down and then lift them one by one. You want to just have only the finger on the string that is actually playing. Right, like that. And again, it's a forearm rotation. Of course, it's a small it's a small motion. It's not like this. It's a very small motion, but that is the movement I'm making. You can see it like. A way to think about that forearm rotation is for a downstroke, you want to feel like you're pushing the pick through the string with your thumb until the pick hits the next string, right? They call it the rest stroke. And for the upstroke, you want to feel like you're uh, your index finger is uh, lifting the pick up through the string, like that. And because it's a forearm rotation, your pick won't touch the next string. It will be free. It's, a, it's called a free stroke, right? So it's rest stroke for down, free stroke for up. And even when it's this fast, I'm still making rest strokes on every down stroke. Although you, you, can't, you can't really check it, but the motion stays the same. Okay, again, up and down. Metronome, uh, change it up. The, I think the top speed for this one would really be something like 180. Let me check. One, two, three, four. Yeah. I can probably make it until like 200, but I mean, if you can do this at 180 or 190, um, you can pretty much guarantee that your alternate picking is and your uh, your alternate picking is completely in sync with your left hand because that's the point, right? The point of technique is to sync the hands. I mean, that's one of the points, but it's an important point. Okay, let's go to ex. Oh yeah, this exercise is called "Damn, you got skills, bruh," or. <laughs> Then you got skills, gra. If you're, a, if you're depending on your gender, because this sounds very um, impressive. But you will see, it's not as difficult as it sounds. At least that's how, that's how I feel about it. Your mileage may vary. Let's go exercise three, which I called bad mushroom trip, because <laughs> it's it's a it sounds kind of freaky. So this exercise, um, this exercise is to train your, start training your half rest strokes, which is an essential stroke. Let me switch cameras a little bit. So, so now we're gonna start training our half rest stroke. And the funny story, that name, I came up with that name in the previous video, that old video, and it was on the spot because I needed a name for this motion. and. At that point, it was like, maybe call it like partial, you know what, let's call it half rest stroke. And that name got used uh, in other videos by other teachers, and they refer to it. Yeah, they call that a, rest, a half rest stroke, but <laughs> they was me, and I just came up with it on the spot. But I'm sticking with the name. And so a half rest stroke is the key to unlocking your double down prowess. Double down strokes are an important part of gypsy jazz picking. Uh, it's the way that... Stochlo gets his sound, right? It's with uh, tons of double downstrokes, many more than I do, but the technique is the same. That doesn't matter how many you make in a row. Could be uh, two or could be eight. You know? mm -hmm. So the half rest stroke is, is the same motion as the rest stroke, but instead of hitting the next string, what you do is you lift the pick up like a little, I call it a little pinch, right? So uh, let me go to the close up so you can see it. So a rest stroke, let me see. A rest stroke would look, look like this. But the half rest stroke is this. 
I'm still, I'm still making this form rotation, but I'm make I'm being very careful not to hit the next string. I'm being conscious about it. It's important to also realize that this stroke is less loud than the rest stroke, right? This is a rest stroke. I know I don't know if you can hear it, but there's because there's compression on the microphone. But and it's okay. It has to be less loud. That's part of the that's part of the sound of gypsy jazz. So this exercise is only have rest strokes. So it sounds like this. So I'm gonna do it very slowly. Right? And I'm making sure that I'm not touching the next string. Whatever I do, I cannot do this. No, it has to be. So as soon as I hit the, that B string, my hand moves up. Ready for the next half rest stroke. And as soon as I hit the D string, my hand skips the next string. That's why there's a string skip. So it helps you not touching the next string. It's all half rest strokes. But here's an extra thing that wasn't in the previous video. We're going to play everything in string rhythm. Because even when we make consecutive uh, downstrokes, or in this case consecutive half rest strokes, and a half rest stroke is always a downstroke, right? Because on upstroke we never play uh, rest strokes. You still got to be able to make that string rhythm. Ding, 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 ding. Still, it's gonna be too do do. Doesn't matter. The audience, although you would never want to play this for an audience, <laughs> but if there would be an audience, they shouldn't be able to tell if you're playing down down or down up, which you never do in Gypsy Jazz. But if you want, you can practice that. But it should sound the same. So let me play this with a uh, metronome. Uh, I'm gonna play it at one fifty. And so this goes in the in the sheet music. This goes up to I think. Now it goes up to here. Now it goes up to there. And then we go back. But you can go up as much as you want. Let me play it. Oh, that's pretty fast. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. That's really fast, but now you do it on every two strings that are possible. So you do it also on the low E string and the D string. Right, so the exercises go up on those two strings, go down, then go to the next set of two strings. But there's always, always should be a string in between, right? There's never, it's never a consecutive of adjacent strings. There's always a string skip. So there's three possibilities, the E and the D, the A and the G, uh, the D and the B, and then the G and the E. Oh, this is <laughs> this was down up. Should all be down. So even if I'm playing on the low on the high E string, even though there is no other string that I can touch, I'm still trying to make that motion of going up immediately. Now, do this exercise very slowly, really. Because I sometimes I teach people on um, Skype and I give them an exercise and they start immediately playing it very fast. There's no point because you want to be in control over the fact that you're not touching the rest, the next string, and you want to be in control on this over uh, control over the string. So let me play it one time at 100 just to show you what it should look and sound like. Let's play it on uh, the A and the G. And first we sing for the rhythm. I don't care about notes, on the rhythm. And once you lock in singing, you can start playing. One, two, three, and.
you will find that this is one of the hardest exercises to play clean and to keep the swing and to not touch the other so do to do everything correctly in this exercise is very difficult so let's move to the next exercise exercise four is called wheel of fortune i don't know why <laughs> that sounded like that to me i got that connota uh, connotation so this is a famous exercise that has been i think used by multiple teachers it's a famous pattern the the, the well-known pattern where you play three notes on a string and you go to the next string and you have to start with a double with a downstroke again so you get two downstrokes in a row so here comes our practice of the half rest stroke and the non rest stroke here they are combined because what's going to happen is you're going to play rest stroke well, let's start for uh, for the example on the b string rest stroke up stroke half rest stroke to a full rest stroke half full half full half full and it's very important that you pay attention to that you really want to play half to full even when it's very slow even when you play it like this you see, when I make the half rest stroke, I'm immediately ready for the next full uh, rest stroke. So don't do full, full, even if you have the time. Of course, when we're playing a ballad, you can do that. But this exercise, in the end, you should be able to play this at 170, something like 170, because it's triplets. Maybe even 180. But for that to happen, you have to make this half rest stroke to full rest stroke. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. And even the people that say that they make full rest strokes, if you film the right hand, which I did with Stockholm many times, and you slow it down, you will see that they all make half rest stroke. At least the people that sound clean, right? You have it looks like this. That's all done with half rest stroke. And that's actually the same. That lick is based on this exercise, or this exercise is to train that lick. So let's play it with the metronome. Let's do it 150, which is already pretty fast for triplets. And again, we're going to shift up, right? So this is the first fret, and then we're going to shift up. One, two, three, four. And tuck it Oh, too fast. One, two, three, four. If you're brave, you can do it without a rest. You hear this tap? That is that is completely fine. That is exactly what you hear when Stockholo is playing this kind of stuff. You hear this. He's tapping the guitar. Did it ever bother you? No. It didn't, because it's, you don't hear that. But some people uh, ask me about like string muting and like this sound. It's part of Gypsy Jazz guitar. Don't worry. These guitars have such a big sound that that is not... That makes it more real. That's... that's, that's Say it like that. Now, the limit for triplets is usually around 170. Let's try 180. I'm not even sure if I can make it to 180. Let's try it. You notice I give an accent on every downstroke, and it's the same time that my hand hits the guitar here. Let's try 190. To, I think that would be the limit for me. Also, I give an accent on that. Oh yeah, I just said it. I give an accent on every beat. One, two. One, two, three. Mm. It 
it was not completely clean, right? I, I need to build up. Now, this is, you could say, well, this is, seems like a very difficult, why don't you just do alt alternate? But actually, this is pretty difficult to play alternate. This, to play it cleanly alternate is also difficult. So it's not that, that is much easier, although I think in the end it could be a little bit easier. But the double downs do give a certain sound. That that heavy accent is difficult to do. And that that is very, I think it's very musical. Okay, let's go to exercise number five, which is a diminished arpeggio, and I call it hot dim. <laughs> like hot damn. Let me see. Let me check the chat if to see if there's any. Okay, I don't see any technical issues. Good. Okay, exercise five. Hot dim. So it's just a basic, it's just a basic diminished arpeggio starting on the first fret. And the fingering is important for this one. Oh, it's important for everyone, but for this one, because a lot of people don't understand why I play diminished with three fingers and not four. Why do I play it like this? So I, I'm, I'm gonna play it without string now just for the fingerings. Right? Why why don't I do just do why don't I just do this? Right? It seems more logical to just keep one finger per fret. Why would I want to stretch? You can either stretch. I usually stretch, right? I I call that open position where there is one fret between your first and second finger. Between your first and second finger. Um, and this is closed, one fret per finger. The reason is, you will see in the next exercise, the reason is that diminished is a very important sound in Gypsy Jazz. There's many licks that are based on it. And... Right, stuff like that. And it's just much easier to play that fast when you don't have to constantly move your fourth finger. Like the next lick, for example, goes like this. I want to see the first guitar player that can play it consistently with, with the fourth finger like that. It's, it is very difficult. And that's the reason that we use three fingers. Now, you might say, well, but I've seen Gizmo Graf and Angelo de Bar play a lot with, fourth finger, with four fingers diminished. But they use a different diminished system, right? Their, their system is different. I'm not going to go into it. I made a video about it. This exercise, though, is to train diminished. So if you use the other fingering system, you might want to change this exercise to that system. But if you are a... If you are a fan of Stokolo or a fan of the Dutch gypsy sound, then you have to use this fingering. That's the Dutch system. Okay, <clears throat> so what you want to do is you want to, the most important thing is for this exercise is to swing again. We want to keep it swinging. Even when we uh, switch from alternate uh, to sweep. We didn't talk to sweep, this is the first time there's a sweep. Now sweeping just means that after a rest stroke, you make another one. Right, there's a sweep. Now there's of course, on the high E string, the rest stroke, there's no next string to rest, but the, str the motion is the same. It means you push with your thumb through multiple strings, in this case, two strings. In the beginning, it's very difficult to switch between alternate or double downs to sweeping and back and make that switch without people hearing it or without losing the swing or without playing it uh, with uh, some kind of fake notes, right? You wanna, it should sound like you're just doing this. Like you're doing the same thing all the time. You can solve this by saying to yourself, if you have trouble with this, 
at the moment you start to sweep, you just say to yourself, sweep, because that will give a cue to your hand, to your brains, that you have to start making a different motion. Sweep. Oh, sorry. Sweep. Sweep. Right? Just at the moment I'm starting sweeping, I say it. I don't have to do that anymore because this motion goes automatic, but in the beginning that might be very helpful. Anyway, slowly. Swing is important. Swing, swinging, uh, swing and clean. There's no double downstroke. You don't have to make any rest strokes. It's just all alternate with two sweep notes or yeah, one, two sweep notes. Let me play it on tempo 150. And it's the same as always. We go up and down maybe five frets. First, sing the swing rhythm. Now, this was all started on the beat, right? Two, do, 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 three, four, two. But you also have to play this continuously. So you play it like this. What this changes is that the beat comes on the upstroke. And that is a very different feeling. But as a gypsy jazz speaker, you have to get used to the fact that downstrokes and upstrokes are not tied to specific beats. So let me play that once. And I'm going to play continuously, so there's no more rests. One, two, three. You see, I lost the swing there halfway. I lost the swing. And the reason is that because the swing rhythm turns around on my hand. First, all the upstrokes are short. Long, short, long, short, right? But now it's the other way around. Now the upstrokes become long. So if you have to pay attention to all of those things, by right? playing the fingering correctly, uh, change to sweeping, the swing, and then also changing it around, that probably will mess you up somehow. So I'm going to do it one more time because I want to play it correctly once. Concentrate. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. That was pretty good. And this is 150. Uh, again, this is eighth note, so the goal would be 170, 180. But that's a goal for like way in the future, like flying cars, people living on Mars. Okay, let's go to exercise number six, which I call the Stochelo. And it's called the Stochelo because this is Stochelo's, one of Stochelo's favorite licks that he likes to play on songs like. Uh, Juke and Juki, you know the song Juke and Juki goes like a. So the song goes like C, C diminished. And what C diminished likes to do. And that's this lick. Very, very difficult, I can tell you. And especially when you hear how, how fast and how clean and how delicious Tochlo plays this. I've been working on it for years. I, st I still haven't managed to play it with that sensitivity. I probably never will. But I'm going to try it. And it's called the Stochelo. So you, you want to play this. You want to practice this. It's triplets. It is the same fingering as the previous, but it's only on the top three strings. Right? And we go back. The hardest thing about this exercise, it's two things. It's a double downstroke when we go down, so there is a half rest stroke, right? It's like rest, up, half, full, half rest stroke, full rest stroke. Half, full, 
and then on the way up there is a sweep up sweep down so there's twice there's a double down once on the way down have full sweep down down and there again because you want to keep repeating this exercise it is again the same even if it's on the same string it's half full even if it's on the highest string it's still the same the half breath stroke is a stroke where you move up immediately ready for the next full breath stroke and that's it's both on the high e string so just pretend there is a string under there you see that you see all the di also the difference in volume that b is much softer because it's a half breath stroke than the D, which I'm accenting with my full rest stroke. You hear the tapping? On every uh, half to full there's tapping. When you do the tapping, you know you're doing it correctly. Don't worry about that sound. Okay, do it very slowly. Give accents on the first beat and on the third beat, even though it's an upstroke. Down, up, sweep. And then you want to move this up and down. So you could maybe start on, let's say, you start here and you go up. You, you, you change on the, on the first note. You go back down, it's even more difficult. You see, that was not uh, consistent. I was rushing the triplet. So, with the metronome, let's go to tempo. Let's do 160. One, two, three, and. Let's first play stationary. Now, now it's, I think, now it's consistent. It's very easy to lose your consistency at the moment you start sweeping. Okay, let's move it up and down. One, two, three. What, what started happening now is that I was doing a hammer-on. I was doing... But no, 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 we don't, want, we don't want that. We want picked. That's the exercise, right? It sounds fine with the hammer-on. I might do that when it's really fast, but the exercise is picking. So it's this upstroke that is the problem. So focus... When you notice stuff like that, focus on that. So I should say to myself, up there. Up. Maybe the problem with you is on the sweep. Maybe the problem is with you is on the double downstroke. When you once you recognize a problem, slow down and start saying the word at that point where it goes wrong. It could be like half because you want to do a half rest stroke. It could be like sweep. It could be like down, up. For me, it's up now. Up. Up. Okay, let's let's try that at one eighty. Just I'm, I'm probably not gonna make it now, but I should be able to do it. One, two, three. Mm. It's pretty good. I was rushing near the end. But, but uh, I mean, it's uh, to practice. Okay, we're gonna go to the final exercise. Let's go to the final exercise. 
uh, which is episode exercise seven is called "Am I there yet?" Because your hand will get tired and you're you're wishing that you'll be at the end. So this is another, I, you can call it a stoklo lick, but it's I think it's an adaptation from a jungle lick. The jungle lick sounds like this. But Stokolo put there put two extra tri triplets in there. He plays this, for example, in the bridge of Hansa Rose, right? There's there's like this uh, two five one to B flat. And then goes to G seven, he plays. Very difficult, and he makes it even more difficult because he does down, and I do up. It saves me from having to do one extra double down, but he does down, down. So there's an extra double down. That feels maybe a little bit better, but it's, it's really more difficult. So I would recommend... is to have accents on C here and the D. You want to focus on and on. So you're going to start here at the 10th fret and you're going to go all the way down to the 1st fret and your hand will get really tired because it's just very difficult to pull off. Both hands will get tired, by the way. Let me be crazy and try that live on camera. I'm going to do 150. 160. <laughs> Now, what will happen, what happened with me, is that you miss this note, this, the, the, your first finger on the D string, you start rushing, because you have to skip a string, so you, it starts sounding like this. You want to play, you want to pay attention to that note and really play it. Okay, let me for fun try it at I think a top speed for for me would be 190, but they're gonna do 180 because I won't make 190 now. And now you start to discovering why it's called Am I There Yet? One, two, teen, diggity, 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 dim. One, two, three, four. Ah. reasonably okay i wasn't really happy with that but hey it's an exercise main thing is go slow second thing when it's eighth notes make sure it's swinging make sure the swing is consistent through every exercise don't do all exercises in one day start i mean exercise i think exercise five six and seven let me see no, ex exercise six and seven are really for later, once you've got a hang of the first five exercises. Third thing, be very aware of which stroke you have to make. Is it a half rest stroke? Is it a full rest stroke? Is it a sweep? Uh, fourth, always use a metronome. And change it up. All four beats. Beat one and three. Beat two and four. Only beat four. If I try this one only on beat four, for instance, it's pretty hard. Let's do 170, and I'm going to do only beat four. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ba digga da digga da digga da digga da digga da doom. Four. One, two, three. Mm. Right? Or, or do one of the swing ones. For instance, let's say we do the diminished, the hot dim, right? Which is exercise five. If we do that uh, with the metronome on only beat four, keep the swing. If you can do it with consistent swing, it means that you shouldn't rush. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, da da do de do de do de do de do de do Or continuously. One, two, three, four. Pretty difficult to do that, by the way. You can lose your, your, your place there. Always good to re record yourself, right? Record yourself and um, check yourself. So that was all the exercises. Now, before I go to questions, I want to try something else. Another reason I'm making this video is because many people that want to buy my book, they first send me email say, um, how good does my technique have to be before I can start with your book? The answer is in these exercises. You can start at the same time, but you have to do these exercises. If you can play all these exercises at tempo 150, you should be able to play everything in my book. And um, if you've never heard about my book, it's a book that will guide you from having no experience with improvisation to a pretty good level. Of course, you need technique. And that's why these exercises for. So what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna play a little video. I'm just gonna start it in that I made about my book. It's a short video, and um, I'll see you right back after. And then I'm gonna answer the questions. And in the video, you will also see if you want to buy the book, how to buy it. Here we go. just listen to a jazz solo on the chords of the famous tune minor swing and if you are a guitar player and you ever ask the question how does someone come up with all those notes all those lines on a jazz chord progression i have the answer for you and i wrote it down in a book called the von hamer system and it's a method that teaches you how to improvise just like this without the use to study music theory skills modes arpeggios, you don't even have to know all the notes on the neck. You just have to learn very convenient shapes across the guitar neck that are based on hundreds of transcriptions of jazz masters that I made throughout the years. If you are interested in learning how to improvise with such an easy method, go to jungleguitars.com and order the Van Hamert System book. I hope you like that little ad. If you're interested okay, in my book, I, please check it out. Let's go back to the... Okay, that didn't work exactly like I wanted. But, so if you want to order the book you can, and you're in the US, you can order it from jungleguitars, jungleguitars.com. That's Tommy Davies' web store. And if you're in Europe, you have to send a mail to me. My email address is in the description. It's heymartacademy at gmail.com. And, and, and please uh, state your country so then I can send you uh, the cost including uh, with shipping. So if you have... The technique exercises that you you saw in this video and uh, my, on my Patreon, you can download the tab if you want, or you can just watch this video. And you have my book. There is no reason that you can't play like I was playing in that video. I mean, it's going to take hours and hours of practice. Don't get me wrong. But there's nothing else needed. You don't have to study any theory. 
you all know I don't believe in music theory. You don't have to study any fretboard visualization. You just have to study technique and my system. That's it. Then you will sound... No, you won't sound like me because you will make different choices with my system. But you will sound that way. If you if you hate that, don't, please don't do any of it. If you like it, consider it. Okay. So I'm going to go to questions. I see that most questions have been asked by Pablo Cardona. When I see all the red. Okay. First question is by Hans-Peter Lidesse. And he says, Hi, Christian. How are you? I got my fat... I'm good. Thank you. I got my fat wagon pig ready. <laughs> That's Dutch, right? Is Gypsy really big in the Netherlands? Wegen. Yes. If you pronounce his name correctly, it's Wegen. <laughs> right? That's his, the Dutch. And he's Dutch. Yeah. I've never met him. Uh, but he is a world-famous pig maker. And he doesn't make only pigs for Gypsy Jazz. Maybe it started that way, but uh, I've, uh, there's, he has the bluegrass pig. He has the mandolin pig. Now, you told me... You just said you have the, the, the big Wegen pig, right? I don't like that pick because it too, has too much string noise. Some people don't care about string noise. That is one of the things I do care about just because the microphone, I have a microphone right here, is very close to my guitar. And that string noise, you hear that on every, on every um, stroke. If you play acoustically, of course, it's not that audible. But if you make videos like me, then you hear it on every stroke and it's just very annoying. That the, the the pick noise on the string it's 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 kind of a weird sound. Now the best pick for me to play is actually my signature pick. Of course I'm going to say that, but it was made by Tommy Dave because I requested, it, which is based on the 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 big city Vega pick. This is the big city, but it is made from a material that sounds better on a gypsy jazz guitar. It, it's based on tortoise shell. It's not tortoise shell. It's a kind of um, special blend that Tommy made from I don't know what's the name again. I don't remember, but if you check generalguitars.com and you search for my signature pick, you'll find it. The reason I'm not using it is because I cannot use that pick on the art stop because it's, I don't know, on the art stop, it's a little bit too big. It's, it's a little bit thicker than this one. For art stop, this is perfect, but I'm lazy, so I just keep this pick in one guitar and I change it when I go to art stop and I change it all the time. But if I would be only playing this guitar, only a gypsy guitar, I would use my signature pick, which is based on the Wegen Big City but different material and um, a little bit thicker. Okay, let's go to... Pablo Cardona asks, Bro, thank you for everything you do. I'll, I'll get my first job and I'll be in your Patreon soon. I hope I can meet you someday as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Uh, thank you for the compliment. You're welcome in my Patreon, of course. And uh, yeah, let's, let's hope we can meet. <laughs> Doesn't look good though, but yeah, we'll, we'll never know. Uh, ben Bloom Guitar asks, man, I'm curious, did Rick Beato or Martin Miller reply in any way to your videos? No. I mean, why would they? It's like I'm a small, insignificant channel. <laughs> if they would reply to me, I don't know, I, I don't think I was like insulting in the videos and I didn't plan, I didn't mean to be. I have great respect for both of them. I admire them both as guitar players and as YouTubers. It was just reaction to, and also, I, you know, my opinion means nothing, of course, in the in the grand scheme of things, because I I'm very aware that my methodology is very off, atypical. Let's say atypical. I'm in mean, the minority of people that teach guitar on YouTube. When I say things like "Don't care, don't worry about theory, don't worry about ear training," that's the exact opposite of what people say. And I always try to stress that it's just my opinion. It's based on the way I've learned to play guitar. Right? And it's based on the way I see that Stockholm learned to play and Moses and Biredi and Paulus and every Sinti I've ever met. Uh, Rocky. Um, I mean, and also many non-Sinti, by the way. It's not, not only Sinti, but based on that, I know that spending too much time on that will actually not be very beneficial. But I might be wrong. Very good chance I'm wrong. Uh, they didn't react. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure even that they even know that I made those videos. Right? Okay. Pablo Cardona asks, can you do exercise three jumping from low E to high E? Let me just check just to be sure what exercise three is. Uh, no, that's, that's no use. That's no use. Because the reason we script a string, it's this exercise. 
the reason we do the string, the string skipping is to force you to make half rest strokes. But I mean, that loses that loses the point then. Yeah, you have to make half rest strokes. But it, that is such an unrealistic scenario that that would train something that you're probably never gonna use. And I was doing it with upstroke, by the way. It should be down. Definitely not. No, no. <laughs> Just skip one string. Um, Lucas Kuppel. Does this exercise work same for fingerstyle jazz? No. No, of course not. <laughs> this is for picking. Fingerstyle, I don't know anything about, but there's, I, I'm sure there's many great exercises. Maybe... Uh, is, does Miko Hilton play? Is Miko still here? Do you play fingerstyle? Maybe he has some stuff on uh, his channel about that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure though. Richard Smith, of course. Pablo uh, Cardona, what recommendations do you have to begin to feel the beats on two and four on very fast tempos? I'm practicing Donali at 210, 210, and halfway through, I'm already counting one and three. Well, that's completely normal. The way to do it is to change the beat all the time. So start on one, two, three, four, and play that for a long time. Right? You want to, and don't change the tempo in between. Then go to one and three, and but keep the tempo, and make sure that it's locked in. Then change to two and four. If that goes wrong, go back to one and three. You want to keep feeding yourself two and four until it starts feeding normal. But you want to keep the metronome at the same tempo. For let's say you do it for two hours, you keep the metronome and you just change it, but but the eighth note should stay the same. And if you do this for a long period of time, long enough, like I've been doing that for years, one point is it, it feels like completely natural to play with the metronome on any click. Now, the thing that I find difficult is to do it on the two end or something, or the four end. I've never been able to do that consistently. So, I mean, but I'm not, I think that is defeating the purpose of it. So just keep doing it change the metronome up don't start on two and four if you can't do it consistently start with something that you can do consistently which is probably one two three four or one and three or only beat one only beat three is also good Pablo Cardona uh, do you think classical fretting hand technique is good for gypsy jazz or should I play like you with your wrist slightly tilted towards the bridge there's two ways to put your fingers on the fretboard. There's the cello way, uh, which is, with, which is but there's a whole, there's not this, there's only one contact point with the guitar, that's the, your top of the fingers and your thumb. And there's the violin way, which is you grab the neck. I'm a grabber, I like that. I like to be able to hang on the neck. And also for gypsy jazz, it's obviously better because you have to play many chords with your thumb. Right? How are you gonna play this chord? Well, it's probably possible. It's way more difficult though. And, or this chord. I, uh, I, play, I play lots of stuff with my thumb. And because of that reason, it's better to grab because my thumb is already there. Second thing is I'm a violin player, so I'm already used to this. Third thing is that it's much easier to do uh, vibrato like this. Because I, I've never seen, you can do probably like this. But it looks ridiculous, and I mean, class, classical uh, guitar players, they don't use that vibrato. This vibrato is really gypsy jazz, and it's just easier to do it when you have this position. And the last thing is, all the players that I know play like this. Of course, you can't have it like this all the time, because when you play a bar chord, your, your hands are going to be like this. But how often are you going to play a bar chord? Not often. Okay, those were all the questions. Oh no, oh no, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, Hans Peter Lillis asks, when I can play these exercises at tempo, am I then a crazy cool Dutch gypsy player with a crazy hot gypsy girlfriend? Um, depends. <laughs> you have to naturalize to a Dutch citizen first. But if you can play it at this tempo, I can guarantee that you are a crazy cool gypsy jazz player. Um, but it's going to take, I don't know how good you are, but it took me a lot of time. I think I started from zero. I developed these exercises maybe after a year. The first year I did exercises that are in the Roseburg Academy. Um, I think these exercises are better though. I like, I'm talking about right hand exercise. I'm not talking about the solos in the Roseburg Academy, of course, the best ever. But 
like the right hand exercises that Stokolo thought of uh, in retrospect. Of course, Stokolo has no problems with technique and he can't really remember what it was to have bad technique. So it's very difficult for him to envision what is needed to improve it. But uh, for me, it was very clear. Uh, based on Stokolo, on the analysis of Stokolo's right hand, but it was very clear what I had to do. So I started doing those exercises. I think it took me like four or five years until I was able to have a clear, defined picking style until two, tempo 220 or something. And I, I was doing the exercise every day for 15 minutes. But then, of course, you also have to practice vocabulary and licks and songs and tunes. So all in all, I was practicing for four to six hours a day for the first like six, seven years. And that's just the truth. So even though I say stuff like, oh, this is an easy system, it is very easy to understand. And it's also you can start practicing immediately, but to get really good, it's going to take many hours, many, many hours. But how I mean, how, how good you want to be? Like you want to teach a gypsy disc guitar on YouTube or you just want to go to Samoa or any camp or any uh, festival and just jam with people and have fun. You need a certain level for that uh, that is not comparable to the level that you need to have to start jamming with Togolo or to teach uh, gypsy disc guitar on YouTube. Great. I uh, see one more question here. I agree about the chords and voicings, but I see guys like Antoine Boyer playing with classical technique, and I have the impression that it's, that it's somewhat easier. I don't think it's easier. Now, Antoine Boyer has, has studied classical guitar, but he can change. I see I, uh, he changes his hand sometimes, but I think in general, but that's because he does a lot of finger style things. And in classical guitar, often you have to play two notes with one note st uh, being stationary or counterpoint stuff. For that stuff, it's good. But most gypsy jazz players I know don't do that. So, but it's your choice. If you want to do it like this, but you're gonna when you have one to play this kind of chord, you have to change your hand back anyway. <coughs> you cannot play this chord. Like I, I once taught a classical guitar player, and she wanted to learn how to play rhythm, and I showed her the first chord, and she couldn't play it. And then she, she said to me, "In classical guitar, we never fret." multiple strings with any other finger but the first and the reason is i, did, I discovered that is because the fingers are like this so it's very difficult to fret two notes like this right in this position but it's it's easy to do it when your hand is back so then we can play these crazy chords like where there's two two uh, notes under my second finger for instance I did see, uh, Pablo, that you mentioned that you hate the tapping sound, but that's because I put attention to it. If you never were, b were bothered by it when Stockholm played, and St when Stockholm was really loud, and I know that because <laughs> I have transcribed so many Stockholm solos, it's part of it. It's just part of it. And it only bothers you when you pay attention to it, but you won't tomorrow when, when there's a rhythm guitar doing... You don't hear that. You don't even hear it now, right? It's only when I when I do constantly. Also remember that the tapping sound is only when I do a half to full rest stroke, which doesn't happen that often. You have to train it because it's important, but it doesn't happen. In this lick, for example, it, there's one. That's the only one. There's two there every here, there. So you're tick, tick, tick. Well, <laughs> I think it adds something. Okay, last question before I. Um, last two questions before I stop the stream. How do you do the one finger slide up the neck with tremolo? How do you do. You mean like this? <laughs> Um, so I don't do, I do like this. Uh, what you do is you play. And when you hit the, the G or you, some people do it, but second finger, I like to do three. You slide, you have a go goal. So the goal is this F on the beat and you just, what I like to do is speed up my tremolo at the end. Ah. So it it get it gains a little um, 
climactic. But it's just, this is fake, right? It's not every note. Okay. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope this format was okay for this kind of video. Um, let me know in the comments if this was doable with the switching of the camera and the uh, um, doing it live. It was actually a lot of fun to do it. So, good evening. And uh, the next video will, of course, be the first video in the Barry Harris month. And we're going to look at uh, Barry Harris playing Ornithology. Good night.